Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's live webinar. My name is Don McKenzie of Digital Rain, and I will be your host. Tonight's course is a hidden revenue stream inside your practice you can't afford to ignore. It's a free educational webinar made possible by Rondo Seminars, Scott Manning, and organized by me, Lars Stone. Before we begin, and so we can get to know you, the audience, a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll. So can you please answer that question while I go through some technical items? Tonight's course uh, is AGD Pace Approved for one hour. At the end of the session, a test is going to be provided to you and instructions to receive the credit. A certificate's gonna be sent to you by Lee Larstone, and Lee is gonna serve point on all CE matters and questions. Techwise, if you can see your screen and hear me, you're, you're in good shape. If you're not watching the screen, if you don't have the screen up, I suggest you do because we're gonna have some outstanding visuals. For audio, you do have the option of dialing in or using your computer. If whatever option you're using is not ideal, switch to the other one and try that. If that doesn't work as well, just rest assured we are recording this session and we can provide that to you later. Tonight's session is all about you. Our goal is to get you the information you need to succeed. And to do that, we do ask that you participate tonight and ask some questions. So take a look at your screen right now. In the GoToWebinar window on your computer, you're gonna have a, a chat and questions council. You know, let's go ahead, that's where you ask your questions. And at the end of the session, I can ask Dr. Rondo and Scott Manning as many as we can fit in. We will have a Q&A once we um, conclude the formal uh, section. So with that said, let's go ahead and Lee, I'm going to close the poll and let's go over to, um, so the results, uh, most of you had said, you know, not referring out too many cases. Um, you know, we have over 70% in, between, you know, in the five-ish and under range, 20% at six to 10 cases being referred out and zero at 11 plus cases. So nobody referred that. So the format tonight is gonna to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation between Scott Manning and Dr. Rondo. Interviewing Dr. Rondo is gonna be Scott Manning. He's recognized as a leading expert in practice management, authoring multiple books. He specializes in helping dentists across North America create successful businesses around their values and goals with focus on transforming practices in order to maximize the degree to which dentists experience happiness, fulfillment, and of course, uh, profits. Tonight, Scott's gonna interview Dr. Brock Rondo, who's trained over 23,000 dentists and lectures 100 plus days a year and has been practicing for over 35 years. In addition to helping patients at his practice, Dr. Rondo has a deep passion for helping you, the fellow dental professional, grow and succeed. His course offerings center around orthodontics, TMD, snoring, and sleep apnea. So at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Scott, and he's just going to talk a little bit more about Dr. Rondo and why we're here tonight. And so, Scott, take it away. Thank you so much, Don. I, I appreciate your uh, energy and, and bringing us together and, and everything you, you just uh, said about both of us. So uh, tonight, uh, for all of our amazing doctors uh, listening in and, and who will be listening to a person who I believe is not only the foremost authority on orthodontics and, and helping general dentists incorporate into their practice, but the, Dr. Rondeau is one of the few people I've ever met who has a such a thirst for learning and, and he can never stops evolving his practice and his, his desire to do better. And, and he could, he could keep all of that information to himself. Uh, but instead, he has taught and influences and continues every year to do more for the industry than any other doctor I know. Uh, so I have a, a deep respect for Dr. Rondo, not only for his clinical prowess and uh, his successful businesses that he has developed, uh, but also for the way that he gives back to his colleagues. And tonight, uh, you're going to see we, he has organized really a jam-packed uh, content-driven call that is going to help you to identify uh, the proper way to, to better serve your patients. Well, I, I like to say treating the total patient, uh, and this is the kind of comprehensive health that Dr. Rondo believes in and really is known for. So uh, I'm, I'm so thrilled today to have my friend on the call with us. So welcome, uh, Dr. Rondo. Hi, Scott. Thank you very much. So Dr. Lawson has written a book, Straight Talk About Crooked Teeth, which everybody should buy. Okay, so there's the book. Scott recommended very highly. Always give your patients a free gift. So the key to my practice, I believe, is educating the parents. 
So there's a mother with about six kids, four in braces. I gave her that free book. It's all about early orthodontic treatment. Once they read that book, they will be convinced that that's the way to go because it's written by an orthodontist. Okay, and Scott, you also suggest I give the gift to other patients like TMJ patients. So I got a water bottle with my name on it and I give that to all our patients too. So I think they really appreciate it. At the end of the consultation appointment, when they sign the agreement, I give them a free gift. So in North America, everybody, fixed braces, permanent dentition. That's the majority of orthodontists doing that. In North America, I believe there's still, when there's crooked teeth, extraction of bicuspids is still prominent in about 60% of the cases. More and more orthodontists and general dentists are trying to do it without extractions, but there's still a lot of extractions going on. In South American Europe, and I've lectured in Europe, we find that functional appliances are what they use to develop the arches, and they want non-extraction. So you have to decide, first of all, when you see a constricted arch, do you want to expand the arch, or do you want to extract teeth? Now, there you can see William. His smile is not as nice as his wife, Kate. And there you can see, and I'm not sure if he had extractions or what, or whether he's just got a narrow arch. But for sure, I like her smile better than William's because I can see, I like to see right to the corner of the mouth teeth. And then, of course, you like Jen. She's got a beautiful smile. And there's a patient I treated. So you can see the patient on the left is pre-treatment. With a narrow smile, I expand her upper arch 10 millimeters with a Hyrex appliance. And she's absolutely drop dead gorgeous. But she's gorgeous because she had no extractions and she had expansion. So you can expand it out. She was 15 when I expanded her. Now here's the deal. 70% of children have a malocclusion. If, if you're all general dentists, and I assume most of you are, these are all in your practice. But I was amazed to hear that, that a number of you are not referring out to an orthodontist. Now I still think you should send the tough cases out to an orthodontist. Here's a question. Yeah, yeah, great. So that was a great, uh, uh, you know, you're proving your point of, of of how much treatment is is still out there and and uh, hitting the core on on your philosophy. So I guess, Doctor Rondo, you would ask, what is the earliest age that you could treat a child with an orthodontic problem? Well, I think we start we start some kids at age five. And, but certainly seven is a very good age because they're very good cooperators, seven. So I would say that seven, eight, nine is a fantastic age to treat. Here's a little guy that's five years old with an anterior tongue thrust. So it's affecting his speech. It's affecting everything about him. He talks funny and he can't, he can't chew his food. How does he eat a sandwich? You know, his front teeth don't touch. There's a seven millimeter space because the tongue's going between the teeth 2,000 times a day. So if you don't stop that tongue thrust, he'll still have a tongue thrust when he's 20, when he's 30. So we make an appliance and we put a tongue crib on it. And that tongue crib prevents the tongue from coming forward. You leave that tongue crib on for five months, retrain the tongue, then take it off. And then you'll see him close down. There he is closing down. His upper incisor are erupting. He's closing down end to end. And then, so there he is on the left. He's uh, five years old. Here he is at the lower picture, he's eight years old. And all I did was put an appliance in there to expand his upper arch and put a crib on there. I charged him 1500 plus 450 for records, a total of 1950. And all I did was put the appliance in and the appliance did the work. I just checked him every month to make sure he was, it was cemented in, he couldn't take it out. And there he is coming in at age 12, look at him. He never had any other treatment except to develop his upper arch with a fixed expansion appliance and put a crib on it. And he's 12 years old, and now he never needed, he never had ortho. The mother asked him if he needed wow. ortho, and I said, you know what? You don't need ortho. He said, one tooth is not perfect. But I said, he's pretty darn good with just one appliance when he was five years old. So there he is, open bite at five years old on the left. Here he is, happy patient, no braces. Uh, mother's happy because she saved a lot of money because orthodontic braces cost anywhere from 5500 to 6500 today. And so she saved a lot of money. She paid me 2000 instead of 6500 Maybe I'm not a very good businessman, Scott. You got the MBA. Maybe I better smarten up. But really, these patients love it, and they go tell their friends, and we get a lot of referrals. Because you must yeah. remember, most general dentists 
that take courses are doing early orthodontic treatment, but still the majority of the orthodontists are not doing it, although more and more are. It's a great point, and it's just a, a wonderful opportunity, and you're doing what's best for the patient. So, you know, yeah, sure, we, we want to, we want $5,000, but you do what's best for the patient, and, and, and you just that's pointed right. out they will refer more people, and, and that's, that's a beautiful thing. So what are some of the problems uh, that you – you know, could identify that when, when kids do need treated early. The first thing that you got to look for, Scott, the most important thing is the size of the arch. And the photo on the top, you can see it's a constricted narrow arch with a high palate. If you leave the arch like that, first of all, you won't get a, you won't get a nice smile, will you? Like I showed you those smiling pictures. Right, you, won't look, right. you, want a, you want a beautiful smile. And you'll, the teeth will come in crowded, and you'll have to extract teeth. Or if you develop that arch, like we did in the bottom, we develop the arch, and now you've got a beautiful arch, and all the teeth will fit. So that's the biggest decision dentists have to make. Are you going to accept a narrow pathological arch and extract teeth, or are you going to develop the arch with the functional appliances and make room for all the teeth? I mean, to me, it's not a contest. Everybody wants to keep all their teeth. Everybody wants non-extraction. So here's a quick case. I show him a lot, but I want to show him again because he's such a good little guy, six years old, comes in with no room for the lateral incisor. Now, that's very important. Everybody that does ortho has to look at the front teeth, upper and lower, and see if there's room for the central and lateral incisors. And you can see he's got room for centrals, but not his laterals. He's got deciduous laterals, and they're smaller than the permanent teeth coming in next. So we made him a little appliance. He likes golf, so we put a golf uh, green on there for him. One midline screw, clasps on either side, turn the screw twice a week. Every month you open two millimeters, and in in four months we've got them open, well, it looks like three months, we've got them open six millimeters, and now there's room for the lateral incisors. And all he did was wear this appliance for three or four months, and then you have to hold for six months afterwards. It's such an easy thing. Everybody wears them. There's no problem. He wears it all the time. He takes it out for sports, takes it out to clean it. You turn the screw twice a week. You can get different colors. The labs all have different colors that they can give to the kids, and they love the different colors, and they have a lot of fun. They send a key with that so they can adjust the appliance, and there's the end. There he is, a little older. So he came in when he was six. Now he's probably about eight, and look at his beautiful arch. He actually <clears> never <throat> came back for braces. All the permanent teeth must have come in beautifully. And I helped his mother. She was an accident case with a TMJ problem, and I helped her, and she thought it was great. So she brought all her kids to me, but all the teeth must have come in beautifully because he never came back. I mean, that's that's what happened. I mean, the same thing on the lower. The lower arch was crowded. See, there's no room. There's two front teeth. They're permanent. They're crowded. And the side teeth, the laterals are crowded. So, again, use a lower appliance and expand the lower. All he does, you don't have to do anything. Just bring him in, make sure the clasps are fitting, make sure he's wearing it, keeping it clean, and they develop beautifully. Look at the del Now, where would you rather be a tongue? I'd rather be a tongue in the lower picture. There's a lot more room for my tongue than on the upper picture. So you're making room for the teeth. You're making it easier for him to speak. When you open the when you expand the upper arch, you're making room for the for him able to breathe through his nose. So you improve nasal breathing, more room for the permanent teeth, broad arch, easier to speak, beautiful smile. Why wouldn't you do it? It's hard yeah. to believe, Scott, that it's not taught in most dental dental schools or ortho schools in North America. It's not taught. Yeah. It's unbelievable, but it is in Europe. It is in South America. Huh. So again, no room for the laterals up above. Just put two little appliances in, Scott. They cost a hundred bucks each. Turn the screws, <laughs> and he looks fantastic. There huh. he is. I mean, it's so such su such an easy treatment for general dentists to do this, and very important. I yeah. charge him two thousand. Charge him two thousand. He never needed ortho. Here's another case that the mother spent two thousand, didn't have to spend six thousand, and save four thousand. So they're very appreciative, and I like doing, as you say, what's right for the patient. So I, I guess the you know when I, when I see this and, and I listen to the your explanation of it, these are things that would go untreated until they d further develop a problem sometime later in their life. So you're you know, right. you're actually not doing what's best for the patient. You're you're also picking up a, an opportunity uh, in in your practice that it, you're, it's not like you're taking it away from anybody because nobody else is doing it. So, uh, like it's no competition. I mean, it's that's what's interesting about this this orthodontics. If you treat early, there's very little competition. 
And I think the general dentist should find out what the orthodontists in their area are doing. Plus, it's extremely important for general dentists to do this, Scott, because most of the orthodontists are in, are in rural areas, are in uh, urban areas. They're in the cities, whereas there's a lot of or, there's a lot of children out in the rural areas. And if the GP doesn't do it, who's going to help those patients? Here's another right. question. Well, I, I lo- yeah, I love this question. So I, I, I myself would like to know this insight. So could you just differentiate for us between uh, orthopedics and orthodontics? It's real easy, Scott. Orthodontics is moving teeth. Orthopedics is moving bone. Can you see the difference between this picture and the left and the picture on the right? That patient, I moved her bone, I moved her lower jaw forward with a functional appliance. You can't do that with braces. You have to use functional appliance. I'm going to show you a twin block tonight. There's another patient, very old picture, probably, that picture is probably 30 years old, but an unbelievable change in her profile in, in, in nine months. Her grandmother didn't recognize her nine months later, and you can see why. Here's another mm-hmm. case. I mean, if you look at the girl on the left, I mean, the kids are going to make fun of her. They're going to call her Bucky Beaver. They're going to, it's going to affect her self-esteem. You put a functional appliance in to bring that job forward, she looks fabulous. And you change your whole life. You change her for life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'd love to hear. Of course, it would take us a couple of days probably to tell <laughs> the entire Rondo story. So, but I, I'd, I'd love to, to just know how long, of course, I know the answer, but how long you've been teaching uh, general dentists and corporate orthodontists in their practice. And maybe you could even give us the quick version of how, you, why you decided to do it yourself. How, what, what motivated you to bring orthodontics into your practice? Scott, I must admit, and, and you got to go back. You got to go back 50 years. <laughs> I've been a dentist for 50 years, and in the beginning, there was so much dentistry to do, so much restorative dentistry to do. Quadrant amalgams. I'd be doing amalgams, 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 and you know, just just bored out of my mind. After 10 years, I was ready to say, "This is crazy. I got to do something different." So I went to an orthodontic course where an orthodontist was teaching, and he said, "Look." You can hire you can hire uh, your staff to do the work. You can be doing general dentistry in one room, and the staff can do the work in the other room. And especially in certain states, and especially in Ontario, hygienists can do all the work. They can put the brackets on, they can put the wires in. So I said, well, that sounds like a good way to make money. So I I decided I would take the orthodontic course and make some money. And and now, um, 35 years later, I'm lecturing 100 days a year for 35 years. And I guess I've lectured over 22,000 dentists, and I'm really trying to change dentistry. I'm really trying to change the way general dentists look at their patients and see if they can help their younger patients to avoid problems later on later on, and be healthy right mm. at the time. So the course is uh, four sessions, eight days. And dentists, after eight days, are doing the course. But we're going to offer that. I offer that in those cities. But also, you and I are offering that in, in Nashville at our course, where they're going to be able to take the level one in Nashville and also get exposed to you. So they can go to those cities or and get me, or they can go to Nashville and get us both. And I have level two advanced courses. It sounds like quite a few people tonight were advanced. And I have two sessions, four days, uh, advanced courses coming up, too. And they're excellent. Just go online and look up all the information. And call Lee at RondoSeminars.com. Lee at RondoSeminars.com and get any information you want on any of the courses. Yeah, is there follow-up after level one, you know, with, with the introductory for dentists who, who need help maybe with the cases and, you know, that they're trying to start? Well, we're going to start, we're going to start something new next year. We're going to have part of the level two for diagnosing and, and, and showing the dentist how to treat the cases. So the dentists are going to bring their cases on a flash drive, put them up in front of the whole group, and we're going to go over the diagnosis. So yes, we do have an on we have an online study club, and um, where you ask questions and we answer them, and then everybody can see the questions and everybody can see the answers. So that's really a neat thing. I think we have 800 cases on the online study club that you can look at mm. and you get CE credits. And I think it's $199 a year, and it's 150 if you want to submit a case with a two week turnaround. So yes, there is help after the course is over to help you with your cases. You want to submit a case, $150, and I will send you a write-up on how to treat the case. If you're charging 6000 you can afford to pay me $150 and get, <laughs> get, and get my ideas. 
Right. Well, I always tell you that that's where we're too cheap. So if anything, we should add a zero behind that. Fee. But uh, but you know, I, I one of the things that is so uh, inspiring to me, and you know, and with my clients, we talk a lot about accelerated growth. And and when you if you think about it, who on the planet sees more orthodontic cases than anyone alive? Well, it's Dr. Rondo. Twenty-two thousand students later, okay, you got more orthodont more cases being started every month thanks to you than any person alive so you now take this online study club and you and you use that as a way to for for doctors to get faster progress because they're seeing a lot more cases so it's really amazing how you have taken this and, and you've facilitated the implementation of ortho into practices because people go to courses all the time but but, but your people start cases and then that's really the yeah. big difference why don't you show us uh one of the a simple class one case that uh, you can um, demonstrate your approach. Okay, so this case is strictly a straight wire case because the arch is wide enough. The arch is, in the, it's a class one skeletal case. So you've got a class one molar and the patient's very upset because that cuspid is is labially displaced. Okay, so, so there it is. I mean, from the front, it looks bad. Eh? The patient thinks this is a terrible situation. And the mother comes in and says, can you fix my daughter? I said, absolutely. It's just strictly braces, and it'll be a real easy case. And certainly general dentists can treat this case. So we're going to treat this case with three arch wires, the 014 nickel titanium wire called NITI. And we put that on the upper and the lower. And there it is. And then you can see the, just the wires go in, and then, and then you'll see the change. Like this is three months later, the teeth are straight. I mean, three months later, the teeth are straight. And now we've got an 018 nickel titanium wire. So we start with 014. Then when the teeth get a little straighter, we put an 018 in there. So here's three months later. The teeth are looking much better. That little girl is not feeling self-conscious again about her, about her smile. Four months later, look, the teeth are absolutely almost straight. I mean, it's just amazing. Three wires. And I'll show you those mm -hmm. wires at the end. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. So there it is. Four months later. Scott, I think I could teach you to do this in a in a half an hour. Just put the brackets <laughs> near on near the middle of the tooth and and put in three wires and you got a case and the patient pays you well and the patient's very appreciative. So there's the finished case. I think I did it probably in fifteen months. Very, very easy case. These are the case I want the general dentist to do. There's no reason these cases have to be referred to an orthodontist. The orthodontists are there for the difficult cases, not the easy cases. They're no different from any other specialist. The only trouble is they didn't teach us anything in dental school. In fact, in Canada, the three dental schools in Canada have stopped putting brackets on teeth. They were putting brackets on teeth up until two years ago, and the orthodontist decided now don't teach them how to put brackets on teeth, so hopefully they'll refer all the patients to us. Well, that's not what you want. You need the money in your practice just as much as they need the money in their practice, and keep the easy case in your practice. Send out the tough ones. This is an easy case. 15 months, it's done. Three wires. And then, of course, you see the teeth were crooked on the top there. So you put an, a wire on the inside of the upper front teeth. You bond it on the teeth. The teeth won't move. You leave it on forever. Patient has straight teeth forever. Easy, easy case. No way that should be referred out. And look at the smile. Look how happy she is. I mean, you can see she's got a bit of a um, forced smile at the top left because she's got that eye tooth sticking out on both sides. So she's not that happy. But now she can hardly wait to show off her teeth. Look at her in the lower, how happy she is. That's the other reason I do this, Scott, because I get that, right? And I, I don't get them ever smiling like that when I did a filling. There was no smiling <laughs> like that with a filling. But with ortho, they smile, they're happy, they got a beautiful broad smile, and that was done with just the wires. Yeah. So that's all I did. The total Amazing. treatment time, 15 months. Three arch wires, an 014 night tie, an 018 night tie, and a 1925 V43. So the ortho fee was 5,500. The records for 4,000, almost 6,000. I mean, in 15 months, I mean, I had to work hard doing general dentistry to make 6,000. I had to do a lot of fillings for 6,000. Whereas this, and remember, the staff are doing a lot of the work. We teach the staff to take the records. We teach the staff to put the brackets on. For sure, if you're going to get into this, you've got to train your staff. And we're we're allowing two staff members to come to our course in Nashville, and um, and they're going to learn ortho, and they're going to learn also how to run a practice. 
I'd love to talk about, uh, I mean, it was a great case. I'd love to talk a little bit here since, you know, the people on, on watching us this evening are, uh, you know, they want to grow the business side of the practice also. And one of the things that, uh, many things, but one of the things I love about you is that you're not just a talking head lecture, uh, be bopping around the country, showing people your cases. And you, you're, you're a wet finger dentist. You're still doing cases every single month, but also you have a very successful practice. And, and it's, it's one thing to tell people how to do dentistry. It's another thing to actually be creating your own business that people could model after. So maybe let's spend a few minutes talking about, you know, what you think leads to so much success in, in, in your practice, uh, what you've done. Well, you've been a big help. Yeah, I, I told you my pra I'm having the best year ever. And I, and I, I think that you were a part of that because we got with you last year and there's been a huge at least a 25% increase. It's ridiculous. So I'm really pleased with, with what you've helped me with. And that's why I want to do that course together because I want all the dentists that take that course to be as successful. But there we all are. There's my staff. We came to your your uh, your course. I took my staff to Nashville and uh, we all had a great time and they just, they just loved it. So uh, I think that helped a lot. Um, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, this well, is so, tell, so let's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Tell us, tell, tell people why you decided to do this and to invite me in uh, to, to the program. Well, first of all, I checked you out. I checked you out. I came right down and and spent two days with you, with my staff at your course, and saw the effect that you had on my staff and me, to show me that this is something we got to do. I mean, I I was thinking about getting together with you because you, you, I was, I was, you were helping me with my practice, but when the staff got involved, it just took off. So we're going to run that program in Nashville. We're trying to create the super dentist, right? It's someone who knows early orthodontic treatment, temperament, rejoined dysfunction, snoring, sleep apnea, and how to run a successful practice because it, you have given us a lot of good ideas. And um, mm -hmm. so there you are in our, so they can go online and look up on my Rondo seminars website and look up Mastership Program and, and just read all about it. Um, Jack Trout wrote an interesting book, Differentiate or Die. And I kind of think that if, if the general dentists are just going to rely on doing um, just just fillings and root canals and, and uh, dentures, I, I think you need to differentiate yourself. That's why I'm so busy. I get referrals because nobody else is doing what I'm doing in my area. You know, there's some general dentists in my town doing 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 some ortho that I've trained, but very few are doing TMJ and very few doing ortho, uh, sleep. And it's really an easy thing to get into and, and really, really helps the patients. So there's the book, Differentiated Die by Jack Trout. And so we're allowed to bring two staff members at no charge. And again, why refer out 50 orthodontic patients a year at 5,500 a case? Why don't you keep that 275,000 within your practice? It doesn't make any sense to refer all these cases out when you can be treating them. And again, in my course, we teach you to do the easy cases and send the tough ones out. Let the orthodontists earn their income. Let them do the tough cases. That's why they went to ortho school. They want all the cases. Sorry, boys, we're gonna do the simple cases. You do the tough cases. We still need you. We still wanna work with orthodontists. But why should they be given the easy cases? And particularly, why should they wait? Why should we leave our kids to wait till 12 or 13 to be treated with maybe extractions when we can go with functional appliances and develop the arches, save the patient money, no extractions, no surgery. Mothers love it. Mothers love it. And there you are at in Vegas, Scott, uh, holding camp and and uh, and teaching some dance. It looks like you're talking and they're writing, so that's good. <laughs> okay. So, there, so the, uh, it's the only course, Scott, I think it's the only course in the country that has that has your management skills and my ortho skills together, running a course together. I think it's going to be a huge success. We had another guy sign up today. He he gave me seventeen thousand five hundred for the whole year in advance, so he can get a tax deduction. So so that was the brother of the guy that signed up last week. So we're getting we're getting people signing up. You don't have to pay in advance, incidentally, everybody. And um, <laughs> so my course, I'm going to give my course in Nashville, four sessions, eight days. And um, and we were running a, a level one course in in one area, one room, and a level two course in another. So the level two course go go online. We're gonna and or yeah, go online and see what's, see what's there. And plus TMD and plus sleep. 
So that's some of the things you're going to teach, Scott. So obviously, um, it's pretty hard for you to summarize. I would say we're, we've got a brochure, don't we, Scott? That's going to be posted soon on, yeah. on the website, outlining everything that you're going to talk about. Because you're going to talk on Friday night, Saturday night, and half day Sunday. So they're going to get they're going to get their money's worth, and then we're going to go dancing. At, uh they got great bands, great <laughs> great country and western bands in Nashville. Howard Fran said last night when I or two nights ago when I was on the webinar with him, he says he loves Nashville as one of the three best cities in the United States for just going out and having a good time. So it is a great city. <laughs> we're going to, yeah. So did you want to say something about your course yeah. here? Sure, sure. Well, yeah. Well, I think that. You know, earlier I pointed to the fact that you can learn a lot of things, but if you don't go take it back into the practice, then it, it, was, it was just a nice weekend seminar. So it, in addition to the fact that Dr. Rondo and I are a, a great dynamic team and we both share the same philosophies, and, and um, you know, you will see that uh, when we're together. But the thing about it is that we can help you to implement your decisions and the changes that you're making in your practice before you even leave. So by having team there, by digging deep into the, the, the other things outside of clinical uh, dentistry that you want to see improve in your practice. So you can read the screen, but it does start with the goals, obviously, uh, and what I call reverse engineering. You know, my latest book uh, is about the secret to success in, in any business, but certainly in dentistry, and that is reverse engineering the practice for growth. And you have to know what that is. Most people, they're in their own way within their practice. There are certain sticking points that you don't even realize, whether it's schedule, whether it's the team, whether it's your case acceptance, whether you're losing patients as fast as you're getting them. Hey, we have to look deeper into the practice to understand what's going on. So throughout the year, because this will be an ongoing relationship, we're really able to take you through phases of growth uh, and, and meet you where you're at, uh, depending on the type of practice you have and, and the objectives that you want to achieve. So everything from the sales side of the practice, the, the patient experience, uh, team member development, it's going to be a, a, a comprehensive uh, program and, and a very intense one. So like Dr. Ronzo said, you can have some fun, but we're also going to work hard and, you know, you will, you will see the results. So in addition to uh, uh, treating the whole patient with ortho, sleep, and TMD, we are going to treat the whole practice uh, in all facets of, of your business. Sounds good. I'm excited to come back, Scott. They're also going to get all your books, right? All your books are available, and that's part of the deal. And um, Absolutely. And that's good. My, 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 my staff are reading the books, and then we talk about them in meetings. Um, no, but the good. other thing that I'm giving is I'm throwing in all my Internet courses. So one of my staff members, not Lee, another one, said, are you crazy? You're giving them seven, almost $8,000 worth of your Internet courses as part of the deal? Why are you doing that? And I said, I want to do it because, number one, they're all paid for. I mean, they're all they're all made now. It doesn't cost me anything to give it to you. And also, I want you to do it. Because I think that if you take the level one course, eight days, and then you watch the internet course, it's like you're getting it over again. And then it's going to really go in. You're really going to get that into your head. And also with snoring and, and TMD. So that's why I'm doing it. I really want to, I want this course to be successful. And I really want the dentist, like you do, Scott, I want the dentist to be successful and be able to incorporate it. And I think that hearing it twice is really important. Hearing it once, sometimes not enough. So that's, mm -hmm. the course starts in March. And they're going to hear you for 15 days. <laughs> I just figured out you're speaking <laughs> three times a weekend for, for, for five sessions. So they're going to hear you 15 days. So I'm sure in 15 days, you're going to get a lot of information into that head of theirs. And I plan to get a lot of information into them too. So I think it's really, I'm really excited about the course. It's 3,500 per session. That's for, that's for three days each for you and me and two staff members attending at no charge. And so it's, I think it's a good deal. Um, there's Nashville, beautiful city, and and um, looking forward to it. Okay, this is something everybody so, wants so to know. Yeah. Yeah. Can 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 the course participants uh, will they receive the credentials after completing the course? Yes, they will. The course AGD Pace approved for continuing education. I've been approved by AGD for 35 years. Uh, all the dental um, boards also approve me. Every single board in the United States and Canada approves my course. You also get a certificate from the International Association for Orthodontics. That organization has been around for 60 years 
and has quite a bit of um, credibility. And you'll get a certificate from them for completing the course and also get a certificate for joining the IEO. It's the International Association for Orthodontics called IEO. So, oh, polling question number two. Which services are you strongly considering adding in 2018? Not ones you're sort of dreaming about, but you're actually, you could see yourself doing this in 2018. It's realistic and there's a path to it. So go ahead, give you 10, uh, 15 seconds here to fill this out. And, you know, be honest and, and just, and we'll see where we are. Okay, so the results are starting to come in. Um, yeah, the percentages are starting to normalize. So oh, I'm gonna round this. About a third are looking at orthodontics strongly. Uh, TMD, we got another third. And, you, and people are voting more than uh, you know, months. You can mark multiple. We got 50% considering sleep. Wow, that's amazing. And then we got 33% other. If you could do me a favor in the questions, just go ahead and chat and tell me what the, the others are, what you're thinking for other. But at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to uh, Dr. Rondo. I have time for more cases. Uh, Dr. Rondo, you, would you like to show a uh, class two case? I would. I would. So here we got a patient that's class two, right? Class two molar, class two skeletal. How are you going to treat that patient? Are you going to take out the bicuspids and pull the upper teeth back? Or are you going to move, move the lower jaw forward with the functional plies? That's the question that everybody wants to know. And, and I like moving the lower jaw forward because it improves the profile. It also improves the health of the temporal mandibular joint. It also helps prevent snoring and sleep apnea. So I like to move the lower jaw forward. I used to do it just because they look better. Now I do it because they feel better. Look at that little guy. Look, how would you like to be going around life looking at that guy like on the left? I mean, the guy on the right is, is, is looks so much more handsome. He looks so much more balanced. His face looks so much better. He's got so much more confidence. It's unbelievable. And we have the ability to do that, and nobody else does. You either use a functional appliance or you do surgery. You either do a functional appliance when they're growing or you do surgery when they're 17, the ortho, and when the orthodontist does it. And you don't want to do that. There's a guy I just used a little Rickonator on him, and look at the crease under the lower lip on the left, and look at the the crease gone on the lower below the lower lip on the right. You got to bring the jaw forward, and it's easy to do. Look at her. I mean, look at the, the the photo on the right. She looks she looks younger on the right than she does on the left, but the left she was younger. She was nine months younger on the left, but she looks older on the left because she's her face is short and her lower jaw is back too far. So this is another reason I went into this, Scott to make people look more beautiful and healthier. So the retractive philosophy, which is the most common philosophy in North America, is that the, the practitioner will wait until permanent dentition and do fixed braces. If they have an overjet, they frequently have to take out the bicuspids and bring the upper incisors back. This retracts the maxilla. You end up with a thin maxillary lip. You end up with constricted arches, narrow smiles, and no improvement in TM dysfunction. That's not what I'm all about. And here, this guy had bicuspid extractions. He's a very handsome guy from the front, but he's not very handsome from the side. Concave profile. There's his teeth. He's 50 years old. He had his teeth extracted probably 40 years ago. And it was very common in those days, 40 years ago, to take out teeth. And there he is. Look how his teeth are all worn down. So guess what he's doing at night? He's grinding his teeth like crazy at night because he's got sleep apnea mm. and he's trying to get his jaw forward. So the extractions cause sleep apnea, in my opinion. So you can see, look how small the mouth is, look how big his tongue is, where do you think his tongue's going? And there's no room in his mouth for his tongue, it goes back. His tongue goes back and causes sleep apnea, okay? I mean, that's what's happening to him. To prove it, there's a sleep study. So I give free presentations, for those of you interested in sleep, if you take my sleep course, I'll show you a presentation on sleep that I give in library presentations. Okay. Mm. Um, so one time I did a library presentation, Scott, I had 90 people. Now I must oh say, my. I got to tell you, now I'm getting maybe 10 to 15. But out of 10 to 15, I maybe sign up eight. And eight wow. patients at 3,000 a patient is, a, is 30, what, eight threes are 24,000. It's not a bad evening when I just speak for an hour. Yeah. Anyway, I've got a lot of ways to build your sleep practice if you're interested. I'm getting a lot of patients from medical doctors now sending me sleep patients. So here he is, HI means he stops breathing 26 times an hour. 
They're 60 mm. minutes an hour. He started breathing every two minutes. He's got moderate sleep apnea. Untreated sleep apnea can decrease your lifespan by 10 years, increase the risk of high blood pressure, heart attacks, strokes, type 2 diabetes, cancer, and two things I don't want, Scott, among all the others, is dementia and Alzheimer's. I don't want those either. And so yeah. I put him in an appliance, which looks like a twin block, just to bring his jaw forward. Okay, it's a snoring appliance to bring mm. his jaw forward and open up his bite. And I took him to 7.7. .7. I did a sleep study, and he's 7.7. .7. So I took him from wow. almost severe sleep apnea down to normal. Normal is five. So he's very happy. He went from 26.5 to 7.7 .7 with that oral appliance. And here's his reporting. He had frequent heavy snoring affecting his wife, driving her crazy. Significant daytime drowsiness, nighttime choking spells. I had a guy today that got divorced, and I told him, maybe you should have got the oral appliance. It might have saved you. And she said, you know, it might have, because she was really upset with my snoring, and she went to the other room. And we kind of drifted apart. And I said, well, let's see if I can fix you up for your next girlfriend. So anyway, so the clinical <laughs> comments, he's snoring like he's purring like a cat. So his wife is happy with this guy. Now he's purring like a cat. Now, this is some of the mm. things that I do to promote my snoring practice. Okay, here's an article I wrote in a magazine. So I said to the magazine, I'll put an ad in your magazine if you let me write an article. If I write the article next to the ad, it goes over well. So when you take my sleep course and, and, and either in either Nashville or other places, you get access to all these all these things that I'm doing to build my practice. Hmm, that's great. Uh, yeah. So... Let's see. Oh, you oh, asked me gonna, to show uh, this case. I'm actually going to show it now. Yeah. You asked me before. Yeah, okay, okay yeah. so here's, here are the photos we take. Again, our course teaches fantastic records. You have to take full records if you're going to make the right diagnosis and if you want to keep your dental license. So that poor little girl on the upper left, look, she can't even close her lips because she's got a 10 millimeter overjet. So mm. look, she's got a retronathic mandible. Her, her her upper lip is looks like it's protruding, but it's a lower jaw's back so far. And there she is. She's got an overjet of 10 millimeters. So where is she going with that kind of a bite? Look, she's biting in the roof of her mouth. Her teeth are protruding. Her lower jaw's back. And when are you going to fix it? Are you going to wait till 17 do surgery on her? I hope not. And so we put a little appliance called the twin block. Now I'm going through pretty quickly tonight. I'm not. I'm just showing you. It's a show and tell. I'm not giving you details. But when I lecture on the twin block, I might lecture for two hours just on this appliance and show three or four cases. So we bring the lower jaw forward because the blocks interlock at 70 degrees. She can't push the jaw back. There's the upper block. It's got uh, frozen on there. She wanted frozen on there. She gets it. She's got four clasps on there and a midline screw to make the jaw wider. There's the lower part with the labia bow and the lower incisors. Very comfortable. And and we, we always give research articles to back up everything we show in our courses. So here's Dr. Clark, who discovered the twin block. He's an orthodontist from Scotland, a friend of mine. I've lectured with him. And he discovered this 40 years ago. 40 years ago, he discovered this twin block. And McNamara, another great orthodontist from Michigan, um, he, he used the twin block and backs it up. Dr. Woodside from the University of Toronto. And Dr. Fraser, I mean, he, he wrote two articles on the twin block. And there, good old Dr. Rondo wrote one. Back in uh -huh. March and April of 1995, I wrote my first article, the twin block. That's part one. And then I wrote something in Space Maintainers magazine. And here's my other article I wrote in 1996 on the twin block part two. All of these articles are on my website. So I think, I'm not sure if you have to join my study club to get them or you can just get them off the website. But tonight, anybody who's watching, if you if you want them, we can certainly uh, ask Lee at RondoSeminars.com and we will be happy to email them to you if you want to use the twin block. Now, this is what happens when you wear the twin block for six months. The lower jaw comes forward and now there's no space between the back teeth. That's why they pretty well have to wear their twin block. So here the patient's biting in the roof of her mouth. And then you can see down below, see her jaws come forward 10 millimeters. It looks like we need to expand the upper jaw a little more because she's in crossbite in the back. But we'll do that. But look at the difference in the in the overjet of 10 millimeters on the left and how the jaw came forward. Now, that takes nine months. It doesn't take a, a week. It takes nine months for her to keep wearing her twin block. And you can see here now that the patient wanted straight teeth. So the mother says, I like the fact that she looks better now.
and she's less mm -hmm. self-conscious, but her teeth are crooked. So a general dentist that gets into functional appliances do, does have to learn to put braces on because the mother wants those front teeth straightened and she'll pay an extra thousand dollars or so to get those front teeth straightened. And we straighten them probably in about four months. And then we put this little sectional arch wire on there with a power chain and hold them closed. But the girl looks fantastic. I mean, so, but the combination of twin block and straight wire, and um, she looks great. And now we'll just let all the rest of her teeth erupt. But you can see her profile looks so much better. She's so much prettier in the bottom. And she's so much healthier, too, because her lower jaw is forward. And look at the lip strain she's got in the beginning. Poor little kid. Look at her. Straining to close her lips. So they won't, so she won't look like Bucky Beaver. And at the bottom, she's a happy little girl with straight teeth. I mean, that's why I do it, Scott, because I get so many mothers. This mother drives an hour and a half to get to me from, um, wow. yeah, almost Niagara Falls. And, and she wow. found, heard about me and she came to me. And because nobody, the orthodontist in that area wouldn't treat her. The orthodontist in that area said, come back when you're older and we'll do something. And the mother said, well, that doesn't make any sense. She's eight, she's young, and she's got this problem. Somebody should be able to fix it. So she came to me. So again, it was it was nine months treatment. I charged her 2000 plus the records were 400 And um, if I do braces on her, what I do is I subtract the fee that she paid for phase one. So let's say in my office now, the fee for braces is 6500 Okay? So 6500 and then I'd subtract the 2000 she paid for phase one, and I charge her 4500 So guarantee she's going to come back to me for braces because she's getting a discount in my office. And the, and, the, and the orthodontist treatment is a lot easier because she's already paid um, because the, the, the functional appliance did most of the work. Huh. Wow. Well, that, that was a, an amazing case, and I love how you – uh, you know, you, you sh shared kind of the, the phase two approach that you take and, and certainly rebating the or discounting the, the fee from that. And, and that's what, uh, you know, gives you this lo longevity of the patient relationship and more referrals. So I, I have been told this, and I'm curious because, uh, you know, I, I, I'm anxious to get your thoughts, that dentists who do Invisalign, they don't need to have any records other than just the study models and the photographs. I'd like to know what your feelings are. Well, it's a big problem. If you go to a dental board with a case, any orthodontic case, I don't care if it's Invisalign, whatever, and all you have are study models and and uh, photographs, you're in big time trouble. So my, I have a diagnostic treatment chart that's 12 pages long. Talks about the TMJ, talks about the perio, talks about general health, talks about all kinds of things on there, 12 pages. And then we have treatment slips we fill out each time when the patient comes in. And you have to take a CEF. And I haven't got time to go through cephalometrics tonight, but yes, don't start a case unless you'd learn how to cephalometrics. So in level one in, in Nashville and my courses too, in all the other cities, we're, we teach cephalometrics. And you have to trace 14 CEFs to get a certificate at the end of the course. So you earn your certificate. There's 12 lab exercises and four tests you have to pass to get a certificate. But then I find when the dentists do that, they know what they're doing. Key to successful practice, I think, is educate the patients. And that's why I like Dr. Lawson's book, Straight Talk About Crooked Teeth. And I give that to the patients. I showed you that before. So all the patients that come in, the mother, mothers have the little children and are kind of wanting more information. I say, take this book. It's a $28 book. It's my gift to you. Read the book and let me know what you think. Well, they read the book. It's really easy to read. And that's inspired me, Scott, to write my own book. So I'll have my book coming out in January, hopefully. And it, it's another nice book like Dr. Lawson. I'm going to have a lot of colored pictures. Some of the case I'm showing you tonight will be in the book. And you'll be able to show the mothers exactly what's going on. Because when they can see before and afters, they're much more apt to say, let's go. The other key to successful practice is to educate your staff. Okay, so here's my staff writing a test. These are new staff members who've been with me like up to four months, and they have to write a test. And I want to see how they do in the test. You see that little devil on the, on the, end, on the end? She's the one that led everybody um, all over Nashville doing the uh, line dancing from bar to bar. She's a little character, and we had more fun with her. So there she is. She got 95% of her tests. Here's another 95% test, another 95%. These girls really knew their stuff. 
So just uh -huh. if you want, the dentists that are watching tonight, if you would like me to send a copy of the test that I give my new staff members, I would be happy to send that to you at no charge. Just go lee at rondoseminars.com and we'll be happy to send you that test because give it to your staff. If you're doing orthodontics, give it to your staff and see how they do in the test because I think I think you'll find it very interesting. And of course, they all pass the test. So in my office, you get rewarded. So they all got a bottle of wine. So they're all pretty happy about that. So good attitudes. When I, I didn't even, the one on the left, I warned her about the test. The two on the right, I didn't warn them. I just told them, come into my office, which they thought was mean. I said, sit down. I want to see what you do. You can't lose. If you get over 80, you pass, and you'll get a prize. If you get under 80, it's okay. And they all got over 80. So anyway. <laughs> That's great. Well, this well, before I go to this uh, next question, of course, my, my favorite question, I want to say uh, if everybody listened to what Dr. Rondo said, educate patients and educate the team or the staff. Yeah, and I think, let, let me let me tell you how people do that right now. Number one, they, they educate patients accidentally. Usually after a patient says no to treatment, then we try to educate by convincing them. So you have to move the education up at the front and, and, and to get the patient ready. Also, educating the team. You have There's so many times, Dr. Rondo, you, you can't even believe this, that the doctors have gone to courses, come back with a new procedure. They start you know, playing around with it in the office, doing a few cases here and there. And they, the, the team's never been to training at all. And, and they don't even have a clue. So you can't leave the team behind. And, and that's why Dr. Rondo's courses are so powerful because it is incorporating all of this knowledge so that the team is learning at the same time. And it's, it's uh, you know, it's really an amazing program. I didn't have a chance earlier to comment about the internet courses. But you, you realize that having that, uh, you know, in the comfort of your own home and, and, and making it really a, a, a team engagement that you can learn all of this, uh, the orthodontics, the sleep TMD that Dr. Rondo has. So, so with all that said, let's talk about the bottom line. What increase in income do you think a dentist who takes your courses could expect in the first or second year? I think realistically the first year, if you start 20 cases, now that's 20 straight wire cases at 5,500, it's, it's 110,000. In the second year, 50 cases, 275,000. And of course the, the, the early treatment cases are like 2,000. So I haven't even put those in there, but certainly it all depends on, as you say, getting your staff committed. I mean, letting them know that you really want to incorporate this into your practice and, and getting them getting them on board. And, and when they start to see, you know, get them to watch some of my videos. When you when the new girl, I just had another new girl join the practice because they we're, we're short staff. They, they want three receptions up front instead of two, which is crazy, but I have six chairs and they're always busy, so they wanted more help at the front. So we fired, hired somebody. And, and she had to take the test the other day, too. After one week, mm. I gave her the test. Now, she only got 65%, but she didn't do badly. But I told her, read that book on Straight Talk About Crooked Teeth. So if everybody should make note of that book, get it on Amazon, Straight Talk About Crooked Teeth. You read it. Give it to your staff to read. And then think about giving to patients. Or you can wait till my book comes out in January, and I'll give you a good deal on my book. Okay, but educate the staff. And there's also videos. Um, you can watch webinars. I've done webinars on early treatment with different cases that you can watch on my website and get your staff to watch it. Do a lunch and learn. Say, okay, we're going to watch Dr. Rondo today for lunchtime. I'm paying for lunch. Uh, he'll give us, Rondo Seminars will give us a one-hour CE credit to all of you. Let's just see what you think of this guy. See, see if you think we should do this for our patients. And if they got kids and the, if they got children, they'll want everybody to be involved. Let me show you one last class three case. It's quite easy at the end here. Um, here he is. Cute little guy comes in with a crossbite. So he's eight years old. So he's got the crossbite. He's got a crossbite. So the mother comes in and says, can you fix this? And you look at the mother and say, I don't think so. I think it's something you're going to have to wait till you're 13. And all the permanent teeth, all the, uh, permanent teeth are up. And the mother thinks you're an idiot. I mean, the United States put a man on the moon in the 60s, and you can't fix this. They can't believe it. And so what they'll do, they'll go find somebody who can do it. So again, there's the crossbite. So the lateral's in crossbite. Actually, the lateral hasn't even erupted yet. The, the central's in crossbite. Okay? 
So you're going to have to open the bite. Mothers want early treatment, okay? And look at that. So there you can see. So the lateral is now erupted behind the deciduous lateral, and the central is in crossbite, and you just have to put an appliance in there to move them forward. But of course, you have to open the bite. So what I do now, normally we don't use blue. I don't know what the hygienist was doing that day, but she put blue on those teeth. And we're allowed to use expanded duty hygienists, put composite on teeth. And so she built that up, and um, but we opened his bite. And so that's on permanently. Can't take it off. And we opened the bite, and now we can put an appliance in. And there it is. He likes the Montreal Canadiens. So he gets he gets whatever he wants. And the cut is distal to the lateral. So when you turn those two screws at the back, the whole front part goes forward and takes the teeth out of crossbite. So you can see there he's out of crossbite. Or he's not quite out of crossbite. He's still going. Okay. So there's the appliance. It's open about six millimeters. And you can see that pushed those teeth forward. It looks like I trimmed it a bit. It looks like I took some off the right side there. So we wouldn't push those teeth forward. And then we push all four teeth forward. And that's a very easy appliance to wear. He takes it out for sports. He takes it out to eat. He takes it out to clean his teeth. The rest of the time it's in. And look at him. Three months it's fixed. So three months. And remember, you don't do the work. The patient does the work. So all I had to do was four buildups and put in that appliance and have him turn it twice a week. And the teeth went forward. So it's very easy. And there's the lower uh, lateral incisor coming into the space. And there it is, a nice broad arch. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? I mean, if they're going to pay you and appreciate you, why wouldn't you do it? I mean, it makes no sense. And if nobody else is doing it in your area, you're going to have a lot of patients. And these patients are depending on you. They want you to do what's best for them. And and you definitely are when you do this. So all I did was four buildups. And you wouldn't have to use blue bisphil. You could use white or some other color. And, and just turn the screws for three months. Turn the screws for three months. The teeth are on a crossbite. Tooth is fixed. And all you do then, bring the patient back every three months or every six months on your regular recall and see if he needs anything else. If you need something else, you're going to do ortho. They're coming to you. They want to stay with you, incidentally. Patients don't want to go to an orthodontist. They would rather stay with you. They trust you. They like you. They think your fees are less, which they usually are. And they want to stay in your practice. So why wouldn't you put an appliance in there that you turn twice a week and do four buildups and look like that in three months. Pace is very appreciative. Mm -hmm. There he was. I mean, look at those teeth. I mean, it looked very good. The mother's very upset. The baby's upset. And now look at him. He's happy, happy, happy. Great guy mm -hmm. showing off a smile. I mean, that's why you want to do this. You want to make children smile, make mothers smile. And, and when the check goes into your bank, you can smile. You know, but I don't. I honestly thought, Scott, when I look back, I did it for the money initially. I really thought when that orthodontist said, have your staff do ortho in one room, you cut crowns in the other, and you'll you'll double your income or whatever. I really think I got in it for the money, but soon after I got into it, I realized I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to help patients look good and be healthy. And that guy looks good. There he is. He's a Montreal Canadian fan. He's a happy, happy, happy guy. And again, four composite buildups with a sagittal, 2,400. He got a, he's happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. I think what I'll do is um, I think maybe we should stop now and maybe answer some questions, Don. Have you sure. got some questions there? So Dr. Ronda, what's the age that you recommend doing twin block appliances? I think probably um, seven or eight. I wouldn't do it earlier than that. I've tried it. And in fact, I just put one in a five-year-old. But I'm using a fixed twin block. I've, I've put bands on the teeth, and I've cemented them right on. So this mother really wanted something done. She heard about me doing early treatments. She's five years old. So, I, But I think the cooperation level is better at about age seven or eight. Um, I use them up to about age 11. After mm -hmm. age 11, I'm using a fixed appliance, either a Herbst appliance or a Mara, M-A-R-A. Those are fixed appliances you can use after age 11 very effectively. But up until age 11, from 7 to 11, I like the twin block. It looks like a bulky appliance. The blocks are only 5 millimeters thick, and they work really well. And they change profiles so beautifully. So I take a picture of the child with the retronathic mandible, and then I move them forward, take another picture, and tell them to put those pictures up in their bathroom um, mirror. And every night, 
when they feel like taking out their twin block, remember what they're going to look like. They're going to look like the one on the left, and they want to look like the one on the right. So for sure, I think I think it's 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 very important, and I, it's a great appliance. It's been around for 40 years, and I've used lots of them. But the next question is, uh, in the session in your courses, do you include hands-on training? Absolutely. Um, there's 12 lab exercises they have to do. They have to bend sectional arch wires. They have to do a TMJ examination. They have to trace 14 steps. They have to put brackets on typodonts. They have to do, um, oh, there's 14 of them. Uh, they have to put ligature ties on. They've got to put arch wires in. Uh, it's, it's a very, very good hands-on course. The people that take the course, because it's hands-on, they start cases. But again, the key is get your staff involved. As Scott said, if your staff aren't involved, and LVI did this for years, right? People that went to LVI, they always brought their staff, and, and they always came back, and they were successful. If you don't bring your staff to courses, then you're not going to be successful. The staff have to buy into your new change in philosophy. And, in fact, there's one guy who's taking the course, and he's taking it because his staff is a mess, and they're completely unmotivated, and they don't care, and, 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 and my staff care. My staff, if a patient's in pain, they cry. I mean, my staff really care about the patients because they just want to help them. And you've got to get people around you that feel that way. And so this guy's taking the course hoping that Scott and I can motivate his two staff members to go back and smarten the other ones up or start over. But usually I don't give up on people. Usually we can train them. They can see the philosophy. They can see helping children. They can see helping TMJ problems, people with sleep apnea, saving their life saving their marriage, when they start to see that kind of thing happen and helping their own kids and their own husbands, boy, they're in. So so that's the key. Yes, very hands-on. Plus, there's four tests. Every time there's a, a, a course, there's a there's a test of 100 questions, true, false. You have to get 70%. But the answers are in the course manual. Incidentally, there's course manuals, 300 pages, with some of these cases in the course manuals. So each mm. session has a 300-page course manual. And, Scott, you're probably also going to give some notes of your course, too, as well as your books, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Yep, I will. <clears throat> They'll have a pl more, more resource material to no one, probably. Okay, Don. Well, we're a little over time. I have another case to show, but I think I'll – maybe we'll do another one. Maybe we'll do another one in January or February, and I can show a fantastic case where, where, where two orthodontists wanted to extract the bicuspids, and it's such an easy case. I did it so fast. It's just scary. Just by developing the upper and lower arches and putting brackets on, it was so easy. And the mother is so appreciative. She sent me a note thanking me so much. She came about an hour drive, too, to get to me. I mean, when you start doing this work, your practice will grow. Patients will spread the word. Mothers talk. Mothers want what's best for their kids. And they will find you, and they will go to you, and they'll build your practice. So, I mean, we obviously, we're on the Internet, but we get a lot of referrals, a lot of referrals. And, and, and what the best way for them to uh, to look you up or to talk with Lee, they just go to the website, rondoseminars.com, or uh, Dr. Rondo mentioned the email, Lee at rondoseminars.com. You can email. Uh, Lee's amazing. She'll answer all your questions, point you in the right direction. And I, I think I would just say, uh, first of all, to both of you, gentlemen, thank you for your time this evening. I think it's always, uh, you know, it's investment in everybody's time, the doctors who have uh, been here and paying attention this long. Uh, but, but I want to just, not all courses are created equal, okay? And, I, and I'm here to tell you, and because I, I wouldn't have brought him on otherwise or call him my friend if Dr. Rondo wasn't the total package. And, and it's important to learn from people who are practicing what they preach. And so it's, a, it's an honor for me to, to introduce him to all of you. Surely you know him by now already, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy to bring Dr. Rondona's skills and, and his courses and, and access to everything he does uh, to everybody listening. And uh, I certainly encourage you to take the leap and to move forward decidedly, confidently, and, and expand the services to help more patients. And uh, it will feed your adult practice also. Uh, moms uh, will, will join the practice too. So I know many people are have been hesitant to, to bring kids into their practice because you, you don't have anything to do with them. But now you see uh, so many opportunities to really help make a difference. So thank you, Dr. Rondo, for, for your time and, and your great knowledge. 
Well, thank you, Scott. I'm looking forward to working with you. I can hardly wait till that Nashville course starts. Both level one and level two are filling up. And so I would urge anybody who wants to get in to, uh, to call Lee and, and register. And we'd look forward to seeing you and helping build that practice of yours. And I think that you'll stay in orthodontics. You'll stay in practice longer if you get into something you're passionate about. And when you start mm-hmm. helping patients and making them healthier and better looking, and better smiles and keeping all their teeth and they appreciate you, you'll be in practice for a long time. I plan to practice a long time. And 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 my staff are hoping I'll practice a long time too. But I am going to go to Hawaii for two weeks and have a good time playing some golf. So anyway, thank you everybody for coming. And uh, if I can be of assistance to you in the future, I'd love to be able to help you. So uh, all the best. Thank you, Don, very much. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, thank, Dr. Thank Aldo. you, gentlemen. So, yeah, thank you, Dr. Rondo, for the cases. Great information. Thank you, Scott, for introducing us to Dr. Rondo and showing us you know, another great way to build our practice and better serve our patients. And a special thank you to Lee Larstone, whose hard work made this event come to life. But most importantly, thank you, the, the audience, for coming out tonight and investing in yourself. We hope to see you in the audience next time and wish you the merriest of holiday seasons. So on behalf of the Rondo Seminar, Scott Banning and the team, good night, and the webinar is now concluded.